Hi guys, it's me again with your next lesson. Today we're going to be talking about what it means to be alive. Uh, most of what we're going to be learning has to do with the living human body, not the dead one. So we need to figure out what does it mean to be alive. Now with humans it's fairly obvious whether or not you're alive or dead, but in the rest of the biological world there are some things out there that you have no idea whoops, if it is alive or dead or if it's something that could have ever have been alive. So we've got eight uh, little handy dandy bullets that will help you realize if you are an alive creature or not. So in order to be considered alive, you need to be able to fulfill eight functions of life. Functions of life. And so the first one is that you need to be able to maintain your boundaries. Meaning, in simple terms, your insides need to stay inside and they need to be separate from the outside. So we have our skin, our epidermis, which allow us to do that. And the skin is what keeps bacteria and viruses out. Um, you have more bacteria living in and on your body than you do actual cells of yourself. So there's more bacterial cells than your body cells. So thank goodness we have skin because that keeps most of them out. Although, you know, if you get a cut or something inside of your skin, then that is a nice open door way for everybody to slide in and then to cause infection. Other routes of infection can be through your eyes, your nose, and your mouth or your ears. So the boundaries are very good for the majority of the time, but there's always a little doorways that things can get inside. So our epidermis, fancy name for your skin, is what helps to keep your insides inside distinct and separate from the outside. Something else you need to be able to do uh, to maintain life is you need to be able to move. Now we're going to limit our talk just to the human body because if I were to go into animals, well then that would just be another, you know, 30 minutes, a half hour. So we're going to limit all of our discussions purely to human beings. So we need to be able to move. And so it's because of the muscular system and the skeletal system working together that allow us to be able to move wherever we need to go, whether it's walk, crawl, uh, roll like a little baby, jog, swim. You know, our muscles and our bones are working together to allow us to do that. Now, of course, there are some people that don't have the ability to move. Um, say Stephen Hawking has lost the ability to even move the diaphragm muscle, which allows him to breathe. So he has a machine helping him do that. So he is considered alive because the heart inside of him is moving. The blood flowing through him is moving. So movement, we usually typically think of moving from one place to another. But just think about all the stuff that's moving inside of you as well. Third thing would be responsiveness. You need to be able to respond to your environment. So I got this little picture over here because this little girl here is uh, get ready to poke her big sister. Now what happens when little sister pokes big sister? Stop it! You're touching me! Okay, and starts whining and complaining to mom. Well, she is responding to her environment. And so, yeah, that's just one example. It could be something like it's hot outside, you begin to sweat. That is you responding to your environment. Or if it's cold, you begin to uh, shiver and try to generate heat that way. That is you responding to your environment. So there's all sorts of different ways we can do this. And so whatever those things are, like this girl right here poking her, that cause us to respond, we call those stimuli. You may eat also see the word stimulus that's the singular version and then stimuli is the plural version so if you see either word uh, they're basically the same is we say stimuli instead of stimulus is because that just sounds funny so the stimulus is the thing that we respond to and then our ability to respond is what helps to maintain life the next one would be uh, four functions of life, digestion. You need to be able to break down the food that you eat and then make them into small little individual molecules like proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, and nucleic acids. From there, they're small enough to get absorbed into your bloodstream and then get delivered to the whole rest of your body. I kind of think of it as, oops, sorry. I kind of think of it as Legos. You know, you get a Lego car. 
Okay, that's your food. And I can break down the Legos into their individual little pieces, okay? Those are the molecules, the simple molecules. Your body takes those molecules and builds them back up, not back into a car. You don't spontaneously create food and hamburgers inside of you, but it recreates it into, say, new bone or new muscle or new um, tissues. Like if you got a cut, you need to rebuild it, and that all comes from your food. And so your food has all the bits and pieces. Your body's job is to break them down into individual pieces and then rebuild them into something else. So that old saying, you are what you eat, is really, really true. Okay, next thing we need to do to, be cons uh, to help keep us alive is metabolism. Now, metabolism is the all-purpose term for all the chemical reactions that go on in your body. So that considers breaking down your food and uh, getting energy out of it or building up the molecules. So you break down, you eat a hamburger and you break it down. That is called catabolism. So that's the breaking down of food. Uh, sorry, there's supposed to be a space right there. Okay, that's catabolism or catabolism, depending on how you say it. And then once we break down and absorb the food, we build it into new stuff like new muscle building up. We call that anabolism. You've probably heard of anabolic steroids. Hint, hint, right there. I don't, I, is that real? Look at that. How do you buy pants for that? That's just not right. Is uh, it, Look. That's bigger than his head. Jeez. All right. So metabolism includes both catabolism and anabolism and puts them together into metabolism. So you guys right now have fairly decent metabolisms because you guys are very efficient at eating food and breaking it down and not storing it as extra poundage on you. Well, later on in life, unfortunately, the catabolism isn't going to work as well as the anabolism. And then pretty soon, you just look at something and you start to get a little bigger. So metabolism is all the chemical reactions, the breaking down and the building up of what's going on inside of you. So we need that to keep us alive. Death is when all metabolism starts. There's no more breaking down. There's no more building up. Okay, excretion. Because of metabolism, we create a lot of waste. And we got to get rid of this waste, also known as excreta. That's a fancy name for waste, so like poo, but it also could be pee. It could also be chemicals that you sweat out. It could be lots of stuff. So excreta kind of goes for anything nasty that comes out of your body. So excretion is just the process of us trying to get rid of it. And so there's only a couple of ways to get rid of bad stuff. You pee it out, you poo it out, you sweat it out, or you barf it up. Okay, that, that's it. There's not much more to it. So that helps to maintain life and uh, keep us alive. And then the kind of obvious one is what helps to maintain life as well, to make more life. Oops. So we need to be able to make more life and do reproduction. Now that implies making babies, obviously, but it also means to make more cells because you only started out as one cell. So how did you get to the trillions you are now? Well, your cells need to reproduce as well as the human being needs to reproduce. So for reproduction, you need one cell, one cell or chocolate donut, whatever. One cell needs to go through the steps of mitosis and turn into, wait for it, two identical daughter cells. And then they reproduce and then you get four and so on and so on. So that one cell that you started out with is now trillions of cells because of cellular reproduction. But reproduction also refers to continuing the species by male and female, joining their gametes together, the egg and the sperm, to make a zygote. Remember all this from biology? No. To make a zygote, which is the fertilized cell, and then it will continue to go through mitosis several hundreds of times to produce the actual organism. So we need to be able to do reproduction. And then the last one that humans need to do in order to maintain life is to grow. And that means to increase in size of a body part or the organism. So this guy obviously is growing some muscles. But if you start out, out as a little baby, ah, gee little baby, and then you turn into a grown up, aha, I'm a grown up now, wee. Okay, that's growth as well. 
So you can grow the whole entire organism, like down here, or you can grow a part of the organism, and they both considered to fall under the growth category. <coughs> Excuse me. So those are the eight things that are necessary to maintain life. So if you don't have one of those, so you don't excrete, you don't pee, well, about five to seven days, I imagine you'd be dead because all the toxins that would build up inside of you. When your kidneys shut down and they don't work, this is life-threatening. So what do they do? They bypass your blood into a machine so you can filter out all the nasty stuff in dialysis and then the good blood goes back in. If your cells don't reproduce, you don't grow. If you don't grow, you can die. If your cells don't do metabolism, you don't pull the energy out of the food, you can die. Oh, see a theme? So any time any one of these eight things doesn't work, you either get illness or death. Yay, woohoo, ain't that nice? So we need to be able to do all eight of these in order to keep us alive. So try to think of um, some other examples of this so that way you could explain this to someone else tomorrow. So tomorrow you're gonna pretend like your partner wasn't here and you're gonna try to explain the eight steps to them and then maybe apply the eight steps to a cat or a dog or something besides a human, okay? So uh, write down any questions that you may have about this. We'll go over them tomorrow and I will see you later. Bye-bye.